give them a round of applause. To them because that's why you're here, and uh, we're going to let's have a word of prayer as we begin as we start the program. Father, we just come before you this evening, and we're thankful, for Father, just for the safe journeys uh, for the group coming in and those who have traveled uh, even to be here, and, and we're thankful for that. We don't take that for granted, and so we just pray that you just view the evening, Father. We're just thankful for how that we can come together uh, to worship you even through song, and so we just pray that you just uh, view these gentlemen and. Thank you, dear Father, for having them here with us tonight. And so we just pray you speak to our hearts, dear Father, uh, and through the through the words, dear Father, that will be sung, and, and uh, you would just receive all the honor and the glory and the praise. And uh, we lift these things up to you. And we thank you, dear Father, that we know you as Savior. And I pray, dear Father, you just again just speak to your hearts tonight in a genuine way. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the AC Melody boys again. Thank you for being with us this evening. This evening. And just to give you just a side note, uh, we will have a break about the middle middle way through. We'll have an offertory, and we will have um, we'll take up a love offering for them during that time. So just give me a little heads up there. And so we'll go ahead and turn it on over to them this time. All If you're here tonight, raise your hand.
We are so glad to be here at Verena Baptist Church. Is it Verena Road? Verena. Golly, man. I'm I trying to tell you. I've been thinking about dog food all day long. It's Verena. But it rhymes with Verena. <laughs> the fish. You're all by yourself, brother. Usually that's the case. Yeah. Well, we're glad to be here at Verena Baptist Church. Glad we can attend. We'll get everything on the First Baptist level right quick. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to be here in your pulpit. Just a pleasure to meet Brother Justin this afternoon and his two lovely daughters. And I'm sure there's a mother around here somewhere. She's probably in the nursery with a baby, more likely. That's where the pastor's wife ends up. But anyway, we're glad to be here. We're glad y'all are here. Are you glad to be here? Amen. Yeah. 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 It's kind of unusual because um, normally we've got our leader, our boss, our friend, our bass singer. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But down here on the end, uh, done a great job on that song, The Old Glory Road. Uh, he sang with the Dixie Miller Boys 26 years ago. Wow. He's been a little over six years here. And, now he's come back to reclaim the title of tenor singer for the Dixie Mountain Boys. His name is Derek Bourne. Are you glad to sing with him, Derek? <laughs> this gentleman right here next to me is a fabulous, fabulous gentleman, Christian, a uh, great singer, songwriter. And he too was a former Dixie Mountain Boys from 98 to a little, almost 2000 and something, about three years. And, uh, He's a super, super guy to travel with. Just, just a real fun guy. He's not a mushroom. He's just a fun guy. <laughs> His name is Jamie Caldwell. Are you glad to see Jamie tonight? <laughs> Let me tell you something about Jamie. Let me, this is something just popped in my mind. I wish you would. But um, <laughs> years ago, they were talking about the Ed O'Neill University. And, of course, everybody is familiar with EOU that follows Ed O'Neill and the Dixie Miller Boys. So many people came through, they created a university. Oh. Yeah. And uh, there was some debate about this member or that member or whatever. And, and Jamie's name came up in a conversation. And they said, well, Ed, what about Jamie? And, and Ed said, well, now, Jamie, he's faculty. <laughs> He's not just a student, he's faculty, so this don't apply to him. <laughs> and does, honor, does love and respect Jamie a great deal, and we're glad that he's filling in for us until the Lord tells us who the new lead singer for the Dixie Melody Boys is, and we're waiting for that. And that's who we're going to pick, is who he tells us to pick. And Ed's not going to make a quick decision, he's not going to make a rash decision, because it's going to be the right decision. And that's the way it's going to be. So y'all keep us in your prayers, and we will absolutely be excited to announce who that person is. Because he's out there, and we know it. We're just waiting on the Lord to tell us who it is. So in the meantime, Amen. Brother Derek, Amen. how are you? I'm doing great. It is good. It's tremendous to be back singing with the Dixie Mighty Boys, where I started my career 32 years ago in the fall of 1987. That first year, I spent 287 days on the road, just hanging on for dear life. I was, I was 27 years old, and Ed was already in his 50s at that time, and that guy was wearing us youngins out. I was the oldest one, and next one went down to, I think McCray Dub was 19 or something, right out of high school, 18 or 19. But 287 days on the road, I got to know Ed uh, quite well for six years. And I know without a doubt, there's a couple things you didn't mess with. His family and his group. You didn't mess with either, either or. And so for him to sit home, and well, he doesn't have much of a choice, does it recuperating? But uh, at the same time, he would uh, not just entrust anybody to go out on the road for us, his group and his ministry, and especially look after his finances. But this guy right here, Ed's known him for over 30 years. I've known him for over 30 years. A guy of integrity, hardworking guy when he's not working uh, in his business at home, he is on the phones, booking dates. He's just a, he's a, he's a, he's got it together. He's the real deal, is what I'm trying to say. And more so than uh, just that fact, he's the real deal also because he's from the pickle capital of the world. He's the real deal for sure from Mount Olive, 
North Carolina that's Willie. Sorry.
that song has made a difference in my life. And uh, it still does today. And it talks about an old man that wanted to sing in the choir. And this song tells you where and when he found it. Please let me sing in the choir, in the choir. Please let me sing in the choir. One old man can be all that bad. Won't you please let me sing in the choir? I guess you'd say he's a fixture around how they all know his name. And every time the church bells rang, Uncle Jesse, he up and came. Always sat in the very same pew, covered in a voice loud and When it came to the Antioch Church House choir, Uncle Jesse never heard enough. You see, he always wanted to sing the choir, but he couldn't sing a lick, don't you know? He tried out for the Antioch choir. 34 years in a row Always get to the tryouts first Wanted to try out first But instead of his singing Getting any better every year It just got a little worse He said, please let me sing in the choir, in the choir. Please let me sing in the choir Sunday morning, I remember it was rain and sun. The church bells rang and everybody came except Jesse, he didn't come. And everybody started getting worried, but they figured they'd start anyhow. Just as they did, Jesse's voice came booming down from heaven. Amazing grace, I'll stand and testify. 
you know, the other two guys would get a room, and, and Derek and I, we, we would, we would uh, be roommates in those areas. So we got to visit and share and talk, and, and man, I heard his heart, and I watched him as he grew in the Lord. You know, I, I, I'm going to say something, and if somebody wants to take me to task, I'll be fine. But uh, too many gospel singers know more what's in the singing news than they know what's in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, we need to get our face in the book. Amen. 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 And Derek was. I mean, on a daily basis, and we would talk about things. And I'm going to ask him just to share, but, uh, you know, he, he was going to sing this song that, that he started singing the Dixie Mountain Voice, I mean, over 20 years ago, recorded it. Uh, but the song, I've heard him tell people all across the country, song means something for now. But, uh, Okay. Just take some time to share this song. I'm anxious to sing with you, buddy. Thanks, man. Uh, my testimony is no different than a lot of folks across this country. Um, I know that I know that I got saved. Uh, the devil will try to make you think otherwise sometimes. But I, yeah, a lot of times you hear when uh, in your service where someone accepts Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. That pastor would just about every time say, now the best and most important thing you need to do from this point right now is to come back to church, to get involved in church, get you a Bible. In other words, don't stay too long out there getting back into the fellowship here. Find you a church that you feel comfortable. And I, I got saved and immediately started singing. Folks knew I loved to sing, and I wanted to sing. I didn't care if it was 287 days or, or more than that. I wanted to sing more than I wanted to do anything else. I was in love with singing. And I had just fallen in love with the Savior. But the singing still was up here. So when I actually joined the Dixie Mountain Boys, I, I had the love of singing. I had a new Savior in my life. But I did not have the tools to go out and minister like I needed. I wasn't prayed up. I didn't know, I didn't know how to pray. You say there's a certain way you need to know how. Yes, you need to know how to communicate. That's right. With Jesus, just not like you need to know, know how to communicate with folks on your job or so forth. I didn't know about tithing. I was brought up in a Christian home, but I, I was rebellious for a long time. So all of a sudden, I'm a brand new Christian with a voice, and I'm ready to go take on the devil. Couldn't have been in a better spot. Brother Ed O'Neill took me in my word. I was, a, I was saved. But I was not strong enough to face the snares that are out there on this road 250 plus days a year. And little by little by little by little, it was so minute sometimes that I didn't even realize that the slide began the first day. Mm. Further down and further down until I was a full-blown hypocrite. Mm. I had the nerve to walk up on platforms like this and brag on Jesus, quote scripture, say the right things, point at the right people, hug the right necks, say all the right things at the right time. And I was probably in the worst condition of anybody in the sanctuary. And then had the nerve to walk off the platform, walk out here and thank folks like you for coming. Pray with people on the side. Pray with people out in the parking lot. Pray with people in the Sunday school room. I'm a perfect example, or was a perfect example of how God can use anybody, any place, any time because he used me for years. But personally, Personally, I was dying. It was so hard to live another life. You just can't be good but for so long. You can't just act like you know Jesus, but so long the real you is going to come out. That's right. <clears throat> and while singing gospel music all these years, for over 20 some years, I sang because I could, because the groups kept calling. The Anchorman, the, the Blackwoods, the Kingsmen, they all kept calling. I kept going and kept singing, kept living the same way. And I lost three families that way. Mm -hmm. Children. Living for me. Thought I was enjoying myself. I was digging my own grave. Until God said, in a most unlikely situation in the state of Missouri, 
then pay attention. This is what God will do sometimes. When you think that you've done all you can do, you've gone as far as you can go, He knows it. He's keeping up with you. Because I was at that point, I was done. I'd made myself sick. I took myself completely out of church, out of gospel music, everything. I was done and I was bitter. I lost so much. And I said, I'm done. I'm done. I didn't need to be up here. But God sent a complete stranger in a very unlikely place. And he overheard me. See, he was... He was about 32 years old. He was an evangelist. He was on fire. He was ready to talk about the Lord. And he overheard me say, I was a Christian singer. And that's all I needed. I tried to impress the socks off of him. I just went at it. I mean, he was standing there and he just asked me how I was doing. He said, what's your story, man? I said, well, I've sung at the Pentagon twice. And I've been to England, Ireland, Scotland, Norway. I've sung at the National Quartet Convention. I've been nominated favorite tenor for years and years, and I've done this, and I've done, I just eyed him to death. And all of a sudden, he, took his, he just folded his arms and started backing away like me. He started smiling and looking at me like, he said, I'll tell you what your problem is, brother. And I thought, problem? I'm not, I didn't realize I had a problem. I was just telling you what I'd been involved in for so long. He said, your problem is you're a lukewarm Christian. Folks, I had never had anybody, anybody. You've got to understand, I was in pain. I was in agony because I was a fake, and I didn't want to be. But you and I, we don't have the strength to stop. It's like a locomotive, and nobody in here, I don't believe, can stop a locomotive. When it gets to rolling like that, and I couldn't stop. I wanted to, and I just couldn't do it. I kept trying, but I couldn't do it on my own. And when he said that, I found out later on, he said, I was so, I was thinking you were going to go to my head. I said, no, what you did was save my life because I didn't know anything about him. You see, because if somebody confronts us, especially someone we know, we'll go, hold on a second, I know you. I've seen you doing a few things too. You know I will do. We'll come back at somebody else. But I didn't know him. I had nothing on him. Nothing. God sent him. And I stood there. I wanted to, I... I wanted to say, how dare you? But you know what happened? It caused me to just stand there for about two solid minutes. No weapons. Stripped down. Totally exposed. And I said, you know what? He's exactly right. He's exactly right. But that moment right there that God did just for me changed everything about my life. Song I'm getting ready to sing when I stepped out in 1992 and recorded this, or no, actually, 19, the late 80s, I first recorded this on the first album of the Dixies. The first line, God has been good to me. Yeah. I realized that back then. But now when I sing, God has been good to me, He cared enough for me that He sent a complete stranger to get in my face and confront me, confront the sin in my life. And it changed the course for the rest of my life. I still make mistakes? Absolutely I do. But I'm not the man that I was. Not because of my hands, but because of God's hands. And that's why we sing. That's why I sing. Because He, and He alone, is so worthy of our praise. Let's say amen. How many knows He's worthy? Amen.
Oh, but God knows all of folks. He knows our human ways. And he understands even when sin is found. His grace is oh, it a
so far, and I tell you what a, what a blessing the testimonies have been, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's really a testimony, of, uh, really, of all of us, isn't it? Uh, we wouldn't be here tonight if we didn't come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen. Uh, and He found us where we were in, in our sin, didn't He? And what a blessing it is. And we're thankful, too, for how the Lord sends individuals into our life to be able to, at times, even help us to see our own faults and failures. What a blessing that is. Lord doesn't make any mistakes. And so it's a great testimony to appreciate it, brother. And uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and take a short break. And uh, we're also going to take up a, a love offering. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and ask the guys to come in as we do. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you and just thank you for the time that we've had already. And just for the uh, testimonies we've heard and the songs we've heard. And we're thankful, dear Father, for how that you speak to our hearts. And, I pray that you just continue to do so even this evening, and I pray that you uh, continue to be with these men, your Father. We know that uh, as they serve you, your Father, we know that Satan's always on their heels. So we pray that you uh, protect them, your Father, and just uh, keep them close to you. And so we just uh, pray your blessings upon them. And that uh, we just pray during this time that you would uh, meet their needs and do this offering, and you know, give them praise for us.
I forgot to do it, but real quick, our tables out there, we have t-shirts, we have CDs, we have magazines. We're going to give away those magazines only, only give it away. Everything else is for sale. CDs are $15 each. we got a package deal. You can get seats for $40. Our t-shirts are the Country Commandments, which is very, very popular everywhere we go. It's, it's the country version of the Ten Commandments. Now, we're not being um, uh, nothing other than cute and country. Raise it up a little bit higher. A little bit higher. I can't. I can't. Oh, it's for you. Yeah. yeah a little, a little higher. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the country version of the Ten Commandments. One God, no one remembers things. All your mom, pa, no gossiping, son of go to meet, no stealing, no idols, no killing, no cussing, and no hanky panky. No hanky panky. They're only $20, and they come in a wide variety of colors and sizes. We hope you enjoy those. And this next shirt has been very popular for us over the past good a year now. And um, can I see the hands of those that have served our country? Can we say thank you to them? Yes, sir. God bless you. We love you. We're not for your sacrifice and your dedication. We couldn't be here tonight doing what we're doing. Freely in an open assembly, able to gather without fear of threat or condemnation or worse. In a lot of countries, they will uh, kill you if you say the name of Jesus. They will exterminate you quickly. But we want to say we stand with our veterans and all of our law enforcement and all of our armed service people. When that flag is presented, we stand for that flag. And when that national anthem is played, we stand for that song. And when we mention the name of Jesus, just like the Bible says, and we bow. So we stand for the flag and we kneel at the cross. Amen. Amen. Will you join us in that? If you'd help us, we'd appreciate it. Those two are twenty dollars. We thank you so much. And um, what a joy it has been to be here at Barana. Don't, hey, don't tell me Verena because I'll say it again. I'll say Verena. <laughs> you know, there is a lot of words everywhere we go. Little towns and little places. We need a wordsmith. We need a wordsmith. <laughs> no doubt about it. So if y'all know a wordsmith, that's someone who's very good with words. If you'll point them in our direction, we'd appreciate it. Uh, I do want our illustrious leader of lead singing. This guy is the leader of all lead singers in my opinion. And he does a song. And um, Jimmy, I think you can probably tell him about redemption. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, tell you something that was uh, really special to me. Uh, I go to the Holy Land uh, frequently. Uh, I minister over there. Uh, we have a mission work in the Galilee region. We have six pastors. They're indigenous pastors. The pastor churches, uh, the main churches in Cana of Galilee. And uh, I had to go back there last fall uh, for work. And I wanted to take my wife. She had never been. This would have been my fourth time, third or fourth time. And um, uh, I had about uh, half a day. We got into Tel Aviv, actually on the way over. Our itinerary was booked months in advance, and so we went through Istanbul, which in retrospect was a very, very uh, uneasy uh, stop. It happened right when uh, they let that pastor go that was a good thing. You remember that? That's a, praise the Lord. That was a good thing. But it had the radicals stirred up. And so if you look like me and carry a blue passport, you were a target. And I had Dina with me. And uh, so it was uh, it was an interesting trip. It started. You know, we did a lot of praying. And uh, so we got into Tel Aviv late one night. The next morning I said, honey, if you're up to it, if you're up to it, we're going to uh, hit a lot of places fast. Before we have to go up to the Galilee region, and uh, we 
we'd stayed in the old city. We uh, got out and walked that morning very early, and it was just it was a special time, first of all, uh, to be with your spouse. Uh, and uh, we'll celebrate 40 years of marriage this year. Amen. And uh, <laughs> she would want you to know that I married her when she was six and a half. <laughs> But well, we started walking that day, and I wanted to take her down to the garden, too. Uh, my previous trips, I hadn't gone back. I was there in 1978 for the first time when I was with Dr. Falwell and Dr. Lakin. And um, we got to, to the entrance of the garden, too. And a lot of the times, uh, there's so many people. It was just amazing. At this point, Dean and I would just kind of walked right up to the uh, this little welcome center. They don't charge you to go in, but there is a person in there that asks you to behave this way and gives you a little pamphlet so you know where you're going and so forth. And the lady behind the counter that day was just a dear, sweet, elderly lady, I would say, I'm guessing, you know, in her mid-70s. She had the beautiful countenance on her face. And Dean and I stepped up and she said, uh, uh, is this your first time here? And I said, uh, no, ma'am. I said, I was here uh, 40 years ago, but this is my wife's first time, and I wanted to bring her to see the empty tomb. And that little lady leaned across that counter at me with the most beautiful smile, and Dina and I got close to us, and she said, it's still empty. Amen. <laughs> that empty tomb. Now, if you know the lay of the land there, of course, he was buried and crucified outside the city walls. Golgotha is just a short walk from the garden tomb. And when you leave the garden tomb, you, you walk a little bit to the west and down across the Kidron Valley and back up the other side is the Mount of Olives. And if you know your Bible, he, when he comes back, the second coming, his feet will touch down at the Mount of Olives. And I tell you, I stood up there with my wife, and I said, it'd just be fine with me if we didn't have to catch the flight home. Amen. I like to be standing right there, you know? But let me tell you, let me tell you. I know. That's going to be preceded by the rapture that we have said. Now, I know all of that, but here's what I want to tell you tonight. I know that I know that I know that he is mine and I'm his. He said in John chapter 14, he talked to Peter in John chapter 13. Do you mind if I take just a minute? Thank you. Well, in John chapter 13, you remember, Peter said, Lord, Wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. Remember that? That's right. Yep. If you, if whatever it takes, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'll even die for you. And remember the Lord said to him, said, Peter, no, you're not. That's right. Matter of fact, before that old rooster crows tomorrow morning, you're going to deny me three times. The chapter ends right there. Remember, remember, the word of God is inspired, but the chapters and verses were placed there by men. So there's no break in the thought between chapter 13 and chapter 14. You know what chapter 14 says? Remember now what happened in 13? Jesus just said to Peter, he said, you're going to deny me before the sun comes up. Can you imagine how that crushed Peter's heart? But the next words, the next words out of our Lord's mouth were these. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. Amen. He was standing looking right at Peter, just like I look at you. I believe he said, and in my father's house are many mansions. And if it weren't so, I would have told you. He may have put his hand on his shoulder and said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm coming back and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. Praise the Lord. You know what? Our redemption is nearer today than it has ever been. Amen. I'm looking for it.
little boy sitting on the front row heard my preacher daddy tell me how how my Jesus he would come again someday
brothers and sisters in Christ and, and lifting up your name tonight. And so we're thankful to Father for it. And I'm uh, thankful to Father for um, just for these men that have been here and just for their time coming here tonight. Yeah. I pray you'd be with them as they get back on the road. That you would just uh, give them safe travels and uh, to their next appointed time. And so we just lift them up to you. And just pray, as yeah, so we've already prayed tonight, just protect them, your Father. Uh, we know that anything we try to do for you, Satan's on our heels. So we just pray that you just uh, protect them and lead them and guide them. And I pray that you just be with each one as they go back to their homes tonight. That you give uh, just traveling mercy. And we just pray as we've already been talking about it. There's someone here tonight that doesn't know you as Savior. That you just do the work in their heart that only you can do. And we'll give you the praise for it. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.